News has been a bit of a downer lately, so I thought I'd keep it light for one episode by sharing some quarantine stories. That's right, no ties today, we're keeping it casual. Let me know why that's a terrible idea and why I should stick to public policy in the comments. I currently film out of quite literally a studio apartment in the middle of Queens, New York. A place that's doing so badly right now we seem to like Governor Cuomo again. That guy was polling in the low zero digits a few months ago. Now when word of a lockdown started, when word of a lockdown started, I grabbed my mask and headed down to the local grocery store to buy my weight and canned goods. Or just put it this way, my blood type for the next few months is Gamble's Soup. Now here's a hot tip for all you looking to go out in a mask. Brush your teeth first. I was walking around catching a whiff of my own coffee breath and realizing that Wow, my girlfriend must really love me if she lets me kiss her with this mouth. Let's add some Tic Tacs to my emergency preparedness kit. So of course I get to the store and the first thing you see is there is absolutely no toilet paper. I mean the best they could do for me on that front was the 9 paid receipt you get when you use a club card. I can only assume that everyone's either grossly misinterpreting their doctor's advice to eat more fibers, or this emergency is literally scaring the crap out of America. Now I'm making my way through the produce section and the manager of the grocery store comes over and starts having a conversation with me about how we're smart for wearing face masks. Thing is, I feel like face masks are starting to turn into a class thing. Because while I'm strapping a piece of fabric to my mouth and what seems to me kind of like a glorified version of lifting your shirt over your mouth when you breathe, well this guy's rocking an N95 mask. That's like the supreme shirt of face masks. Very limited edition. My roommate and his girlfriend just brought home some designer masks themselves with cute artwork on them. Maybe not supreme, but we're definitely talking about at least Uniqlo. Meanwhile, I'm over here slumming it with the equivalent of an unbranded sleeveless undershirt. Of course, seeing the manager of this grocery store rocking this snazzy super limited edition accessory has me asking one question. Just how much are you overcharging us? Turns out quite a bit as my spending more than $100 on crisis priced non-perishables probably got that guy more masks than a Halloween store. So, alright, I have a metric ton of processed meat in one of those push carts that it's about as stable as our stock market right now. When it hits me. Wait, I live in a walk up. Yeah, I'm not rolling in that raid shadow legends Nord VPN type of money quite yet. Now I'm not sure if you've heard, but New Yorkers, we're not known for being the most polite people in the country. We keep six feet away from each other naturally and year-round avoid Times Square like it's a quarantine zone. When a pandemic comes and gives you carte blanche license to completely ignore everybody, including granny trying to move her groceries, well good luck getting a hand from anyone. Hey, I'm social distancing here. Yeah, if you try to sing from my fire escape, a choir of people are going to come together and tell you to shut the hell up. Luckily, everyone in New York currently regards other people's belongings like they're a biohazard. So I was able to leave my bags downstairs and awkwardly make several trips, passing several people coming up and down the stairs trying to ignore me. I guess the key takeaway from this story is I went to the store. Also, I'm stocked up to the point where I won't need to see the sun until my grandson's graduation. So don't worry about me. I hope this lightened your day at all and gave you a rough idea of how New York culture is handling the current quarantine. If you want more of these just for fun quarantine vlogs, let me know in the comments. I'm currently quarantining with my girlfriend, a roommate who is a musician, and his girlfriend. And tomorrow is my girlfriend's birthday, so the sitcom scenarios write themselves. Ah, you got me a can of Campbell's soup. If you absolutely hated this new concept, thank you for patiently sitting it out to this point. Let me know your opinion in the comments as well. I'm not going to abandon political coverage, but maybe I'll just occasionally try to keep it light with a weekend story time or something. 
you know, until things get a little brighter. Thank you, and that's all I have to say about that.